Okay, good morning, game makers, game makerinos. Uh, my name is Phil. Uh, you may have seen me posting around the subreddit as Tootsoup. Um, I've played around with Game Maker now for about a year and a half to two years, probably edging onto the two years. Uh, I've taken part in many different GM48s uh, and also just making puttering along on my own projects at the moment. Um, just close this. And uh, yeah, so today I wanted to take people through how to use source tree and Bitbucket. Uh, so there'll be a couple of steps where I just need to like basically blank the screen and come back later once I've set up a few things, like just to kind of pretend like I'm coding or pretend like I'm making art. Um, but otherwise, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is to make a Bitbucket account. Uh, you can use GitHub, but I find Bitbucket is better because not only can you have private repositories, which means that you don't have to worry about other people stealing your code, even though that pretty much never happens. Um, you, it also plugs in a lot easier into SourceTree itself. Um, so once you've signed up to bitbucket.org um, and made your account, uh, you will see this screen. You obviously won't have any... Uh, any projects uh, or any repositories created, um, so you'll just have nothing here. Uh, do not look at the penis hell <laughs> game. That's actually a, a that's actually a secret um, page on our website if you want to try and find that one. Um, <laughs> but it's basically a game about being a penis and uh, shooting. I think our faces, uh, the team's faces. Anyway, disregard that. Uh, <laughs> so once you get to this this point, what you're going to want to do is create a repository since this is the entire point of uh, this tutorial, is to teach you how to use uh, version control within a team. Uh, so you're going to be wanting to create a repository. Uh, so the owner is me, uh, that's my name, so I don't really care who knows that. But anyway, um, so I'm going to call it Source Tree Tutorial. You can see that I've done this before. Uh, <laughs> I was just testing out different stuff. Name, you can describe it if you want. A tutorial for Source Tree. Well, Let's do it. Let's be, let's be professional. Uh, these are all just default. I prefer to use Git uh, for the repository type because it makes it a lot easier. Uh, and then you just uh, create the repository. Before I do that, I'm just going to delete the old version that I had and create it. Uh, you won't have to delete old things because you won't have anything there. Um, okay, the other, so as I said, the other reason why Bitbucket, other than being private and having teams of up to, I think, 10, uh, which is really useful. Um, is that you can do this, which is a one-click uh, clone to your source tree client, which means a one-click clone to your PC, basically. Um, so what cloning means is that at the moment there is a repository on the internet, basically. So in the cloud, let's call it the cloud. Why not? Um, there's a repository on the cloud, but there's nothing in it. But in order to be able to push to that cloud, so in order to be able to upload your files to the cloud, you need to make a clone of that repository, put stuff in it, and then push it back to the cloud. So that's that's kind of that's kind of the flow of Source Tree and Bitbucket is that you have a repository on your local machine. There's another repository on the in the cloud. You code 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 art 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 music 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 on your computer, uh, and then you commit those those changes, and then you push them to the cloud. So that's just some of the terminology. Um, that we'll be using today. So if you click that button, clone in source tree, uh, make sure that you do have source tree installed. <laughs> That's probably another pretty good, uh, pretty good recommendation for this. Um, so I'm going to clone it to a folder that I had set up already. Uh, you might want to make a new folder or whatever. Um, that folder does need to be empty, completely empty. So make sure that is true. You can select that, you can name it. Um, in the source tree itself, these are the bookmarks. So it's basically asking you just what, what you want to name your project in when you're looking at it in source tree. So for me, source tree tutorial totally works. And then it'll clone it. And uh, nothing will be here. Uh, so just to give you a bit of a, a idea of what a game might look like by the end of, end of it, this was our source tree um, commits and pushes for the last GM48. Um, so you can see there's three people working on it. Uh, one person's doing the main code, one person's doing art, which was me, 
and one person jumps in with music and that kind of stuff uh, but never actually re-emerges uh, because we found that it was actually easier to send the music outside of outside of version control just um, to everybody basically I think that's what happened anyway so back to our one so this is this is our folder that we have now um, on our computer and you can see that there is a little hidden file uh, called .git uh, and that contains all the information for uh, source tree to read and to push and to keep track of things. So probably don't delete that. If you don't have hidden files showing, then you won't even see that. Um, the very first thing that you're going to want to do when you create a repository uh, is so that other people can see it and other people can grab from it. The first thing that you need to do is actually just put a file in it and commit it so that you start a master branch. Uh, and usually what people put in it is the ubiquitous change log. Um, so version 1.0 of a thing that I'm not going to make a version 1.1 of. Uh, version 1.0 created repository or whatever. Uh, notes and commenting as per usual, very important um, in this uh, in this process. Um, so this this log, this history shows what has been changed. Uh, so at the moment it's showing that we have uncommitted changes and that's kind of the start of the graph. Uh, if you if, if you want to go over to fi file status, you'll have a file that is pending to be pushed to the cloud. So again, that, that whole thing of you make changes to your local copy, then you push it to the to the cloud and then someone else can grab that, that change down to their one. Uh, so at the moment I'm going to be committing, oops, don't push immediately. So the changes created change log.txt. So this is the commit description and that will come up in your history in the description here. So be sure to be as descriptive as you can with that because it'll tell people that are working on your project what you've actually done. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. Now once I've committed it, it doesn't actually do anything. So if someone were to pull the repository from the cloud, they wouldn't have my changes. There wouldn't be a change log. And in fact, they can't even grab it yet. Um, so what you need to do is push. Uh, so it's got a little question mark here over which ones you want to push. That'll come into play later on when you have multiple branches. But we'll explain that then. Um, so you want to just tick that, press OK. And that'll push it to the cloud. So now, if someone grabs um, that repository, rather than getting the empty uh, folder that we had when we first created it and cloned it and put it on our PC, they will actually get changelog.txt sitting there as well. Um, so that'll be their thing. So that's the very first step, um, pretty much. The second step that I usually do is actually to just create a blank project in GameMaker in that folder because then once everyone... This, this is all pre-work. This is kind of what you have set up so that when you know, you're starting a project, everyone can just jump in at the same time, grab the project out and start working on their particular bits. Um, so I'm going to make a new project. It's in there. I'm going to call it source tree tutorial and I'm going to create it. So here, sorry, here we've created a, a blank source tree tutorial. Um, so after I've done that, probably what I'm going to do is you guessed it, go to my file status. So you can see it's created all these different files which we're going to have to push to the cloud because again, just I know I'm, I sound like a broken record, but this is the local copy. We commit the changes that we've made to the local copy and then we push them to the cloud. Now you can commit multiple times and that's actually a really good way of being able to roll back your changes um, because once you've pushed, Rolling back changes is actually kind of difficult. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into that more later. Uh, but for the moment, so I'm going to push all those those files, which you would see here if you go into your configs, defaults, so all these random files that it's created um, with just a blank project. Um, that's all these ones here. So I'm just going to say change, or not changed, added GMS blank project files. Easy. Now you may be wondering why I don't just push immediately the changes to Origin Master. That's because of what I just said. You you want to be able you want to commit and maybe commit some more, commit some more, like and that creates different 
versions that you can jump between if you need to. But again, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Just do not click that. You always want to have a separation of committing and pushing. Commit, then push. Commit, maybe do another commit, then another commit, then push. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a far better way of doing it. In this case, because I just want to have the blank project files available for people, I'm going to push straight away. So again, just make sure that's ticked. And I'm on the master branch, and I'll explain that in a second as well. But the master branch is basically the, the branch that you want everyone to merge back into before you go ahead and publish something, because uh, that'll bring everyone else's um, work into the main copy kind of thing. You also really don't want to work on the master branch for too long. Uh, for this kind of stuff, making sure that everyone has the same base, the same like skeleton structure to work from, that's fine. But once you start going into things like um, art or coding, different people doing different things, you want to be branching off. Okay, so the state that we have it at the moment, if someone were to pull our repository from the cloud, they would have what we see here, a blank project file and a change log. So let's pretend, let's, let's start pretending that we've got multiple people working on this thing. Um, so, yeah. All right, so I'm going to pretend like I have two people which is you know, pretty reasonable. Usually you have a coder and a artist. Um, so let's pretend that I'm the artist. Um, so I'm going to do what's called branching. So branching uh, involves creating your own kind of work workflow, I guess. So you're basically, you're taking the basic thing, like in the master, uh, you're taking the thing that everyone should have kind of thing, it's like the lowest common denominator, and then you branch off and you start working on your stuff, and then later on you can feed back into the master. That's kind of that's kind of what that is. I don't know what was going on there. Anyway. It'll become more apparent once we once we start going. So I'm gonna call this new branch mm, Morty. Let's call it Morty, because I like Rick and Morty. Uh, so it's a working copy parent and we're checking out a new branch. So create that. Um, but I'm also going to make a branch for the coder. And I'm going to call it Rick. Easy. Okay, so I'm just going to switch to the Morty branch. So also, by the way, you can switch between branches just by double clicking on them here. Uh, if you have changes though, if you've actually added stuff, but you're moving between branches, it will ask you some questions about whether or not you want to stash those changes or if you want to commit them and push them, blah, blah, blah. But really you shouldn't be moving between branches when you haven't committed things. So I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. Just if you do get a, a message like that, maybe give it a Google to see what it actually means to stash stuff. Generally speaking, I don't stash stuff. So uh, I would just say commit make sure you're at a point where you can commit something and push something before you switch branches um, is usually best practice in my opinion by the way i'm very new to all this <laughs> so i hope i hope this makes sense anyway so we're morty so our local copy looks like this again it's just the blank blank files usually what i do when i'm doing art for projects is that i actually just create a folder a separate folder called arts so rather than adding sprites within game maker which is totally fine. You can just, you know, create sprites within Game Maker. It's a little bit, it can be a little bit tricky when people create, like, say the coder creates a random sprite that they just need there to test an object. That can get a little bit confusing when you're merging together branches. So what I generally do is just do all of the art outside of um, Game Maker. And that makes, that, that makes it a little bit easier later on when we just have to, basically, later on, I'll just merge all my art into the, the main branch. Then I'll load up the main branch, add all the sprites, just do, 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 like a robot kind of thing, just spend about half an hour just adding all the sprites and uh, naming them and assigning them to objects. So that's the way I do it. I don't know, your revolts may, revolts, your results may vary. <sighs> all right, so let's just grab some random images from the GM48 that we just finished. Um, okay, so Morty's been working hard and he's got, actually let's, let's just do the ghost tower for a moment. So Morty's been working really hard and within the arts folder he's made three sprites uh, and they look really cool. See, how cool does that look? Why didn't that get more than 5.8 guys? Fuck so salty about that. Anyway, um, 
<laughs> so he's been working really hard. Uh, he has changes, so you'll see those in the file status. So these are the files that we're going to upload. Um, so I'm just going to commit these. Um, so added art ghost tower. And I commit it. Easy. Um, pretty simple. Yep, it's pretty simple. Um, you can do multiple commits if you want to, and I'll just have to remember exactly what this uh, kind of does. It's been a while since I, I usually, because I just do the art, it's usually one commit at the end. <laughs> so um, let's have a look. So I'm going to commit another so added art uh, insect tower. Commit that. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Yep, so there's there's multiple commits there, but I haven't actually pushed yet. Um, so let's just do one more. Let's say we get the art of the volcano, which was kind of ludicrous, but funny. Oh, and, and maybe the Raven Tower. Have we got the Raven Tower around? I really liked that one. Yeah. All right, so he's done heaps of work. He's an absolute champ. He's he's flogging at something chronic. So we're just gonna added uh, Raven Tower and Volcano Tower. The the formatting of this doesn't really matter too much as long as you've got the information in there. Okay, so we've added a whole heap of stuff, and you can see our commits here on our local machine. Um, but it's not updated on the external machine because we haven't actually pushed it yet. So we're gonna want to push. Uh, Morty is the is the main branch for us anyway, uh, and we're pushing it. So now, if someone were to switch to our um, our version, if someone were to grab the Morty branch from the cloud, they would then have this arts folder with all this awesome art in it, and we can show you this. So if I say switch to Rick, so Rick has started coding, or at least he was going to start coding, but he's really drunk from the night before, he's hung over, and he hasn't started yet. So if we switch to Rick's branch, right, and we go have a look in our folder, whoop, art's gone. That's because we're not on the same branch as Morty. Morty's off working his heart out trying to do all the art, and he's created the art folder, and he started, whereas Rick hasn't actually started anything yet. <laughs> so let's pretend to be Rick, um, and do some coding. So, let's go, so Rick wants a sprite of himself because he's that kind of dude. Uh, just do a quick, I don't do any of my spriting usually in Game Maker, so I might make some mistakes here. But let's just create an object called Rick and make uh, something real simple. So this is this is all Rick's actually capable of doing at the moment. Um, uh, zero equals twenty. Speed equals five. Uh, and we'll say that direction equals I random three sixty. And alarm zero equals twenty again. There we go. Uh, and then we're gonna, he's going to create a quick room. He's not going to put a background because he's that kind of dude that just doesn't give a fuck. Going to put the object in there, make the speed 60, save it. And he is pretty pleased with his randomly moving square. <laughs> mm. All right. So Rick thinks to himself, that looks freaking sick. So I'm going to upload it. So again, file status. So there's a few different things that GameMaker will update when you update things, uh, when you actually are working on code. Um, and you can kind of see them all here. So the actual project itself has a bunch of lists of all of the things that you have in it. So every time you make an object, every time you make a sprite, every time you make a room, it will be adding those things over here. So room names, RM main, I added that, objects, I just had object zero because I'm bad at naming things apparently. Sprites, I added srick. So that project project.gmx will contain a list of all the objects. So every single time you update things um, or create new things in the project, it'll appear here. 
that's also what I said earlier. When you have multiple people working on the code and say someone creates, say, say Rick creates three sprites, but also Morty is working on his branch and he creates three sprites, those sprites aren't, they're, they're not in the right order to themselves. So if we, sorry, with regards to each other. So if we merge those branches, we're going to have conflicts because in line eight, rather than having Rick's first sprite, it'll be named, it will be Morty's first sprite. And so you just, basically you just have to go in and merge those yourself by hand. It's not very hard. Uh, and I'll show you that in a, in a later, probably later video, um, cause I'm not going to have time to do that right now. Um, but yeah, you can see all the other things. So object zero, this is all the information that pertains to object zero. This is all the information that pertains to uh, room. So these are all things that have been added. See how it doesn't actually have green or anything, or is these are the ones that have been changed. So I've changed that value apparently, who knows. Um, so you can see that by modified being the little thing here, and this is not tracked, which means it's new. So Rick's gonna push that. Um, so he's added, Sweet pink square square <laughs> that but uh, <laughs> moves around and shit. All right, so he's going to commit that uh, to his branch, uh, and because he's kind of wants to go off and do something else, he's going to push it real quick as well. Uh, so he's pushing to Rick. And Morty's like, he's like, hey, Morty, I fucking added a sweet square. And Morty goes, oh, cool. I, I really want to check it out. So Morty, who's on his branch, so his art branch. So if you see now, if we switch back to that, his arts are back. Uh, it's really hard to pretend to be two people, but this will be way easier when you're just doing stuff by yourself. Um, so his arts thing's back. So he's like, oh, man, I really want to check out your code, Rick. So he double clicks on Rick's. He switches to Rick's and he can see all the objects and stuff uh, that have come through. And you may be wondering what this looks like when you're switching between branches even actually in GameMaker. You don't have to close GameMaker and reopen it. It actually handles it pretty well. So if I switch to Morty's where none of this has happened yet, or none of, he, he hasn't added any of these objects or anything on his branch because he's just working on art. So if I switch to Morty's, GameMaker will kind of automatically reload this stuff or at least it usually does. Okay. Maybe not. <laughs> Way to make a liar out of me, uh, game maker. Okay, well, it usually does, so that's cool. Oh man, that's super annoying. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Anyway, the, the, the moral, the, 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 main, the, the main idea is that you don't actually have to close uh, Game Maker in order for you to get this stuff redone. It might just be because Morty hasn't actually added anything. Maybe if I try, maybe if I try just closing it and opening it just because he hasn't actually made anything, that might be why. I think it, yeah, it might be because he hasn't actually made anything within the game maker file, and so there's nothing to overwrite, kind of thing. Oh, there, there we go. It just wasn't reloading it. So if if Morty makes a sprite, so yes, Morty. Let's just. I just want to show you guys this before I move on, uh, because it is kind of important to know that. Oops. It's kind of important to know that you can trust game maker basically. Um, oh, Morty. I'm actually going to name it this time. What would you do? I'm going to do the exact same thing because it's a really easy way of showing that something's happening. Uh, speed equals. I'm going to make him seven, and um, equals ten. So he's going to absolutely be a little chipmunk. Direction equals I round um, three sixty. Uh, um, Zero equals ten. Shove a room in there. And main. Oops. Sixty. And add the object to your knob. Uh, 
do do do. Okay, so he's got a square as well. So and because he's Morty, he's going to be committing that as well. Added um, even better blue square s s s square for people to play with. Uh, and we'll just push that quick. So now, let's, come on, come on Game Maker, don't screw with me. Um, so you can see we've got Morty's stuff. If we switch to Rick's stuff, it actually, so it collapses everything because it kind of rereads everything and now we've got all Rick's things. So if you can imagine, <laughs> if you can imagine two different people doing this. So on the one hand, we have Morty who's done a bit of art and then he's gone into the code and he's programmed his stuff. And then we've got Rick who's woken up, done some coding and gone back to sleep. Um, you can switch between those branches as long as you don't have unsaved changes. You can switch between those branches as you like, um, but eventually you're going to have to merge them back into the master. And this is where conflicts happen. Um, and kind of let screw it. Let's just do it. Uh, I've got. I've been talking for what 25 minutes. Hopefully people haven't skipped too much. All right. So now we're going to try and merge. Merging is an interesting beast, uh, and actually I might just take a pause right now uh, and just have a quick play myself so that I don't confuse people when uh, when I do it. So just one second, I'm just going to do a fade to black and fade back out. Okay, so I've had a quick play and I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, so say we're in the Morty branch and we've added a whole bunch of stuff, but we want to merge it back into the master so that whoever is doing that clone thing from the cloud to their local machine will have all the changes that I've made as Morty. So they'll have my art and they'll have my sweet blue square. Uh, what I need to do first is change to the master branch, making sure that I know that uh, I've committed all my changes so there's no like lost files. Uh, and then I click the merge uh, button. Uh, and then what I want to do is merge. So it says pick a commit to merge into your current branch. So I'm on the master branch and I want to merge Morty's branch back into me. So I'm going to press OK on Morty's last or updated commit. So that's this one. Ooh, so OK. So now I've merged Morty stuff into mine. And now I want to push, so that's on my local machine. So I've got the master, I've merged Morty stuff into mine, which was really easy because on the master it was just blank. And we're going to do a harder one in just a second, which is merging Rick's in. That'll be really interesting. And now I want to push it back onto the cloud so that whoever comes along will be able to grab it again. So we're going to push uh, and we're doing the master one. So press OK. And now the master has been added, uh, has been updated with all of Morty's stuff. So that's one, that's one, that's a really easy example of what happens when you merge and then push again. This one will be a little bit harder. Uh, so this one will get a little bit tricky. So making sure that I'm, which is merging Rick stuff, because if you remember, both of them have made a sprite in the very first sprite slot, and they've both made an object in the very first object slot, and they've also made a room in the very first room slot. So they're kind of the exact opposite of what you want in a team. <laughs> they're both working on exactly the same things, and they're not kind of complementing each other's actions, which is kind of what Rick and Morty are like. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to want to merge again. But this time I am choosing Rick's latest commit, and I press OK. Now, it comes up with this message, and this is a really helpful message because it's kind of one that you want to have up there. Um, and you will also see Game Maker start to shit itself. Uh, because what happens when you merge things is that Source Tree will automatically go into those files, those XML files, and insert little like pointers for you to use in order to find easily uh, the places where your um, code conflicts. Okay. That's not a bug, it's a feature, like you really do need to know where your code conflicts and this is the best way to do it that apparently they've found. So it says here, you now have merged conflicts in your working copy that need to be resolved before continuing. You can do this by selecting the conflicted files and using the options under the resolve conflicts menu. I generally keep this up <laughs> because uh, I'm a bit of a noob and I need to know these things. So close that. <coughs> okay, so we have 
things that are bad. Well, not bad, it's, it's just merging. So, what you can see when you click through these things is there's some that are fine. So, object zero doesn't conflict with anything else because no one else has, no one has altered object zero at the same time as Rick if that makes any sense. Same with Rick's sprite and same with, um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, no one has made a Rick sprite called S Rick, and no one has made an object called object zero or no one has, uh, say in the future, gone off and altered object zero's properties and then tried to merge it back to a version which hasn't been altered. That would also get merge conflicts. Um, so here we have our very first merge conflict. So you can see here, so this is basically what it, what source tree will do to show you where your um, conflicts are. So it'll put a little indicator and say the top one is the one that you're um, trying to merge into and the bottom one is what has been, what you've grabbed to merge, if that makes any sense. Um, in this case, we don't have to, we don't want to take one version over another. We want both versions in there at the same time for Game Maker. So what we do is that we show it in Explorer. That's the, that's the source tree project. We edit it with something like Notepad++. I highly recommend Notepad++ because it's a really useful tool. Um, I haven't updated for a while because I haven't had to do this for a while. Uh, that's my sealed deck from Magic the Gathering. That's an old one. Um, so what we want to do is rather than choosing, okay, well, I want uh, Rick's sprite over Morty's sprite, I want both sprites. So what we do here is we actually just delete everything that Game Maker has put in. And now we have a sprite name list of S Morty and S Rick. Pretty easy. Same thing goes for objects. Oh, whoops. Don't want to delete that is you want to keep both of them. So we now have an object list that includes both of the objects that were named. So O Morty and because Rick can't name things properly, O object, object zero. Then save that. You can just minimize it because you're going to be doing this again. Again, Game Maker is going to start going off at you because you've got exceptions and, and stuff going off. Trust me, it will resolve itself. Then what we do is we say we resolve the conflicts don't resolve using mine or theirs. That's an option if you do have like a, a, a version that you want to grab r over another one. Whereas in this one, we want to merge both. So we want to mark as resolved. You can also restart the merge if you want to, uh, if you've made a mistake and that will restart it and put in all those headers and, and like open brackets and stuff like that. So we want to just mark this as resolved. Okay, so that's been resolved then you just basically go through all of them. Um, this can be a little tedious if you've managed to really screw up with your setting up, um, but it's not that bad, I guess, uh, is kind of what I want to, kind of what I want to say. Um, I don't really know what I've changed here. Oh, it's the objects being in there. That makes sense. Um, so now we want to just, so in this case, in the instances that are in the room, we want both of them, why not? Doesn't really matter. Uh, in this one, I think it is just actually where you are, your actual view of the room in the room editor. So you can probably just delete one of those and it'll be fine. So save that and go back to the source tree and mark is resolved. And the final one, which I think has now been Nope, nope, the final one's been resolved somehow. All right, I'm happy, ignorance is bliss and all. Um, so now we've merged everything. So we've merged the branch of Rick. It automatically fills in what the conflicts were. Uh, so we can just say that, yep, that's fine with us. Uh, and then we push. And now you'll see in the actual log history that we have merged Rick's branch back into the master. So now, if we go into Game Maker, we will see that we have, like magic, uh, <laughs> both the sprites, both the objects, and the room, which has both objects in it as well. 
running around like crazy. Ta-da! Um, so, just as an addendum, while, while these crazy little squares are running around, you might notice that it, it would be really, really easy to make sure that no one screws up by adding the sprites in the same places. Um, by just making sure that you have a whole bunch of sprites and a whole bunch of objects set up and a whole bunch of rooms set up at the start that people can use as they like, but knowing that no one else is going to use them. So say if you got, you just have, rather than having just a blank template and people start adding sprites and objects, you could have it so that you have a blank template, but has 20 blank sprites, just so that it's initialized uh, in the room and people don't, excuse me, people don't have to worry about um, overriding other people's sprites. So they can just say, okay, is anyone using Sprite 2 in Mumble or TeamSpeak or whatever it is that you use? Is anyone using Sprite 2? No? Okay, I'm going to start using that for whatever spriting or object that I need to use. Is anyone using Object 5? Okay, well, no one's using Object 5, so I'm going to use that one, you know. So don't, don't, do not use that object and maybe keep an updated list in a document somewhere of the sprites and objects that people are using. The other thing that you can do is, as I said earlier, you just have one person that's doing the coding and one person that's doing the art. And then the person that's doing the art doesn't even open Game Maker until the point at which he's finished all the art. <laughs> and then he goes in and starts adding all the sprites, adding the sprites to the objects, if the objects still, uh, if the objects already exist or, you know, whatever. And that way that the artist doesn't have to get into in the way of the coder. Um, what else? Let me just think. Um, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Uh, it's it's a relatively easy process. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was informative. If it wasn't, I'm sorry, um, but ask me questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Cool. I'm gonna go have a shower. See ya. See ya. See ya. See ya.